Welcome to this podcast designed to prepare students to master the 2013 Washington State Biology End of Course Assessment. I hope that whether you are a student, a parent, or an educator, you will get a lot out of tuning in. The main goals for this podcast are to, one, become familiar with the types of questions that will be featured on the EOC, number two, to closely examine a practice scenario and evaluate where and how points can be earned, and lastly, become aware of some common ways to earn points and pitfalls to avoid that might cost students points when answering this type of short answer prompt. This podcast is focusing on strategies for writing new procedures. As a note, students in the class of 2015 and beyond are required to pass the Biology EOC as part of graduation requirements. There are three categories of questions on the EOC. There are multiple choice questions, completion questions, and short answer questions. The focus of this podcast series is on the seven different short answer types. Those comprise about 22% of the total exam, and you expect about five of these seven to be featured on the test. An investigation is an experiment. A conclusion is the outcome of the experiment, and that includes the original testable question. A trend is the overall direction of a data path, so that could be a positive or a negative or a neutral trend. Logical means to be reasonable or to make use of reason and good sense. Control experiment is an experiment in which one, only one variable changes and all the others stay the same. Validity or a validity measure is an attribute in which the investigation promotes the degree of confidence or it's a measure of how true. A validity measure is part of the investigation that promotes the degree of confidence that the data collected is actually true. It's an accurate representation of what you're investigating. Reliability or reliable refers to the attribute of the investigation that promotes how consistent the results are from one trial to the next. A level is an amount of some variable that can be changed step by step. These might include mass, temperature, pH, humidity, etc. So in this scenario titled Foaming Spuds, the student is given the background. So in this case, Mike and Kelsey are students that are studying how hydrogen peroxide is broken down in cells by the action of the enzyme catalase. The question here is what is the effect of acidity of potato juice on the volume of foam produced when hydrogen peroxide is added to the potato juice? So in this case the manipulated variable is the acidity. The responding variable would be the amount of foam which is the oxygen gas produced. There is a prediction and a list of materials. This is a a still shot of two petri dishes. Petri dish on the left has a piece of potato in water. You'll notice that the petri dish on the right hand side has a noticeable amount of, of bubbles. So that potato is placed into a petri dish of peroxide. And it's the interaction with the peroxide and the catalase which produces that bubbling effect. This is a picture of the setup where you have gradients of pH from pH 6 on the low end to pH of 9 on the high end. You have potato juice added to the graduated cylinders and then you have the substrate hydrogen peroxide being added. Procedure is given and in this case the prompt is to provide a new set of procedures for a different manipulated variable. So whereas the previous manipulated variable would be the acidity of the solution, in this case, the question is what is the effect of temperature of the potato juice on the time for bubbling to stop after hydrogen peroxide has been added. You'll see that there are a number of bulleted items that you want to pay attention to as you're answering this question. We'll go over those a little bit later. So this is the list of attributes for a new procedure. You'll see that there are seven attributes, each one scoring one point maximum for a total of seven attribute points. You'll see that the range of attributes gives you the score points. The maximum score allowable is two points. And if you earn between six and seven attributes, then that would be your score. What we're going to do now is look at each one of these attributes a little bit more in detail so that you can know how can you maximize the points that you earn as you're going through a short answer prompt like this. So the first attribute is simply identifying the controlled variable. At minimum, you must include two variables in your procedure that don't change throughout the experiment. So for example, 
you might put 10 millimeter, milliliters of potato juice in the container or you may add 5 milliliters of the hydrogen peroxide substrate. These are things that are not the manipulated variable. So these are not temperature related, they're different things. The manipulated variable, did you identify the variable that you're testing the effect of? And then for that single variable, did you include a range of levels for that? For example, in this case, manipulated variable is temperature. So you would want to test for temperatures of 5 degrees, 10 degrees, 15, and 20 degrees Celsius, for example. The responding variable is what you measure. Did you identify what you're looking for? So an example might be you're measuring for the time for the bubbling to stop. Did you identify what you will periodically measure? So you have to state specifically that you will measure X at different intervals. For example, in this case, you would measure the time it takes for the bubbling or the foaming of the peroxide to, to stop. And you also have to state that you will record that. And typically, we record data in either a data table or a chart. Did you mention that the trials are to be repeated? Typically. The, um, the, the hallmark of science is that experiments can be repeated over and over and over again to establish that you're seeing the same effect. So the consistency of your data will show you if the phenomenon that you're studying is actually true. So typically we say that three trials are averaged at the very end of this experiment. So as we see here, we have trial one, two, and three, which are all separate. And then those are averaged at the very end. The next attribute is extra validity measure. So did you describe one or more ways to make sure that your procedure is actually testing what you want it to do? So essentially, are you looking for possible sources of error that you can remove so that your results are actually more believable? So that would include adding a third controlled variable so you can earn your point that way. Did you suggest cleaning the glassware before you start the experiment? By doing that, you would remove any contaminating materials or, or, or liquids that may alter the outcome of your experiment. Another way to get that uh, validity measure point is to state that any mechanical and electrical devices work properly. So for example, if you're working with a hot plate because you need to vary the temperature of some uh, solution or liquid, um, you'd want to make sure that the hot plate works, that it's plugged in, that it's, um, that it's calibrated, so to speak. Did you write your steps in a logical way? Are they detailed enough so that if you were to give that to someone else that they would be able to follow it? Did you use numbered steps? It's highly recommended that you do a diagram. If you do create a diagram, make sure that it's well drawn, it's clear, and it has appropriate labels that match with the steps in your procedure. A common mistake might include not stating an end time for recording observations. So you may want to observe for 10 minutes and then record at that time frame. But if you don't mention the end point, then you may not earn that point. If you simply say st setup is diagrammed, but the diagram is incomplete or confusing, then you won't earn that point. Or if you just say record data in a vague, kind of confusing way, then you won't earn that point. So you have to be specific, record the time it takes for the bubbling to stop. That would be a specific way to earn that point. So we'll look at uh, three different student scenarios and we'll grade them as we go through here. So we'll look at uh, three different student responses, uh, a two point, a one point, and a zero point response. Uh, what we're looking at here is actually um, the best that you can get. It's going to earn seven attribute points. You'll see that there is a mention of the manipulated variable, two controlled variables. The responding variable is described. You'll notice that the procedure is set up in uh, a numbered fashion. You also mentioned that it uh, indicates repeating trials. So all told, the seven attributes are included here. So this is how it was graded. So there are two controlled variables included. The manipulated variable was described over a range of uh, four temperature conditions, room temperature, 72 degrees Fahrenheit, 82 degrees Fahrenheit, and 92 degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, the responding variable was described as measuring the time the mixture is bubbling. There's a specific reference to recording the time this mixture is bubbling, so record measurements attribute is given. In step seven, uh, the number of trials is indicated here uh, for a total of three trials. The same thermometer being used for all temperatures would be an extra validity measure. So why would this be an extra validity measure? If you use different thermometers, you can imagine a scenario where the different thermometers are maybe calibrated at different uh, temperatures, or if maybe one was broken, then that would give you some uh, misleading data. 
So using the same thermometer is actually going to help us give um, more accurate and um, less uh, error prone data. Uh, in this uh, last case, the logical steps, the, the steps of the procedure are detailed enough to be repeated. There are uh, steps involved that are numbered. So this is overall a very good answer. So in this situation, you'll see that there are some similarities between this and the first response. You'll see that the steps are numbered and you'll see that there are a fair number of details. But if we look a little bit closer, let's find out what um, is missing. So you'll see that only one control variable is included. So they fail the, um, the attribute requiring two variables, and so zero points are given. They do mention the manipulated variable and the responding variable. They don't mention anywhere that measurements will be recorded or um, taken into a data table or a chart. They do mention the repeating of trials. They mention no extra validity measure and they um, include uh, steps of the procedure detailed enough for another person to follow and so they score the logical steps. So out of seven attributes, four are scored and that would be one out of two points. This is the final student scenario where uh, zero points were awarded and you'll notice that there are some similarities between this response and the previous two, that being that the uh, steps are numbered and you'll see that there are some details, but not enough to show that the student strongly understands how to write procedures. So they do include two control variables. They mention the room temperature as the manipulated variable. Despite the fact that the bubble data is somewhat vague, um, points were still awarded. No mention of recording measurements or repeating trials was in indicated and no mention of an extra validity measure, such as cleaning glassware or calibrating or making sure that equipment works or using the same equipment from trial to trial to trial. Any of those would have given the extra validity measure point. So logical steps was awarded zero points. Measuring a vague parameter gave them the manipulated variable point. You'll see that the second attribute is scored for manipulated variable. However, the inability to repeat this in a very clear way um, prevented them from earning the points for logical steps. So they only scored three attributes out of seven, which would be one point. So here are some takeaways. Uh, don't confuse a prediction, such as a hypothesis or a conclusion for procedural steps. The procedural steps are a challenging task for a lot of students to do because there's a lot of details that you have to keep in mind. So it's really the, the meat of that experiment, which is what the, the procedures are about. It's not the beginning of the experiment, it's not the end. It's the middle. Number two, don't confuse a control experiment for a field study. In control experiments, they typically happen in the lab, and for that reason, more uh, potential errors can be locked down and identified. Field studies happen um, typically outside, and there are a lot of environmental conditions that you cannot control, for example, wind and rain. So they will typically be a little bit more flawed. You will earn no points if you don't correctly match the new manipulated variable with the appropriate responding variable. So you have to make sure that those connect. Additional takeaways include describing how the manipulated variable and the responding variable will be used in your procedure. So you don't need to specifically label or list them as long as you describe them in proper use. Please be very clear about what you're measuring. So bubble data is not necessarily specific, but the measuring the time for the bubbling to stop that's very specific. So vague answers that receive no credit, record the data, that begs the question, well, what data are you measuring? So you should be specific. Measuring the data, a similar situation, or, or watch what happens and record the measurements. These are all very, very vague and very difficult to understand clearly what the student is writing. Clear and specific answers that do receive credit would include recording the number of organisms in the sample area or measuring the height of a plant measuring the time for seeds to germinate. And remember that when you choose your manipulated variable, make sure that there's at least three different levels or conditions that you're testing. So if it's mass, maybe it's 5, 10, and 15 grams. Or if it's pH, it's uh, pH level 6, 7, 8, and 9. If it's temperature, it's 0 degrees, 5, 10, 15 degrees. So make sure that you have at least three conditions for that manipulated variable. I'd like to thank you so much for joining in. Uh, in this podcast, you saw that the short answer new procedures item has seven attributes, of which you must score six to earn the maximum two points. You also saw three sample student responses, each of which earned different scores.
These scores were based on how well they matched the rubric. And then finally, you learned how to avoid simple mistakes that might cost you points when responding to this item type. Please direct your correspondence to me at the email address provided on the screen. Good luck, and I hope this helped.